there is a, a large body of observational data that looks at food sort of questionnaires, dietary intake. Then there's this large body of observational data looking at tissue levels of linoleic acid. And then there are, uh, while not perfect, body of randomized controlled trials. And when you meta, uh, when you pull them together into a meta analysis and look at them, um, it suggests benefit of reducing saturated fats, increasing polyunsaturated fats, particularly the higher quality trials. And so altogether, you have these different types of, of studies, which we would say are, are, have higher validity and reliability than petri dish studies and um, cell cultures type of, of studies. They're all, they're all pointing in, in the same direction. So it makes it hard just looking at that body of data to, to really point the figure at seed oils and say, they're the culprit. That's why we have these, you know, this high incidence of cardiometabolic diseases and obesity today. So we we really could just end this episode here. We could just be like, this is the outcome data, you know, say no more. But I think that it will be helpful to go through some of the the mechanisms, some of the ways that linoleic acid affects physiology, risk factors, because people will still be exposed to these other claims online around inflammation, around cholesterol or blood glucose. So perhaps we step through some of this and maybe we start with inflammation. Why, why do you think that there is this idea out there that linoleic acid, this omega-6 fat in seed oils, increases inflammation? Well, the, the, the standard, the, the story is, so linoleic acid, omega-6 fatty acid, uh, can be made into arachidonic acid, which is another polyunsaturated, very important polyunsaturated fatty acid in our, in, in our tissues. Um, about 1% to 2% of the arachidonic or linoleic is converted to arachidonic acid. So arachidonic is 20 carbons four double bonds to, for the chemists out there. Linoleic is 18 carbons, two double bonds. So you have to add two more carbons and four more, uh, two more double bonds to make arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid itself is, a, is the precursor for a wide variety of other metabolites, what we call oxidized, ox, uh, oxygenated metabolites, um, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and then some other things from cytochrome P450, et cetera. Um, these are whole, all this, um, hundreds of molecules are made, we're called light, they're called oxylipins. And these are, um, some of them are pro-inflammatory. Some of the molecules that are made from arachidonic acid are pro-inflammatory. And we need them for inflammation when we have an inflammatory insulin. What's and therefore they got labeled the entire class of omega six fatty acids got labeled as pro inflammatory without realizing that as time goes on we've discovered more and more and that actually some of the metabolites of arachidonic acid are anti inflammatory they oppose you know the, the body is an amazing complex interactive system where one insult leads to the development of the 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 uh, products that will slow it down. I mean, there's a whole discovery of a things called resolvins and protectants, which mostly come from omega three, but there are some that come called lipoxin A, which comes from arachidonic acid, and it's a, it's, it suppresses the inflammatory response. So it's just far too simple minded to say that the omega six fatty acids are pro inflammatory. In fact, when people have actually looked at randomized trials, asking the question, if I give more linoleic acid to people, will there be an increase in inflammatory markers in the blood? The answer is a resounding no. There is no increase in inflammatory markers when they look at meta-analyses of the done of these studies. It does no increase, and it's been published many, many times. But that does not stop somehow. It does not stop the idea that's out there in in the world that these are pro-inflammatory. It seems like no amount of evidence is going to turn this ship around, uh, which is very depressing. But they're not pro-inflammatory. Um, so put that one away. We can talk about the actual data if you, if you want to. But I think um, 
that particular, that, that is the big one. This episode is proudly brought to you by 38 Terra. Try 38 Terra's DMN Prebiotic, the science-based daily multivitamin for your gut microbes, a simple and delicious way to take your gut health to the next level. Now back in stock in new and improved packaging for customers living in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Get 10% off your DMN at 38terra.com using the code THEPROOF. That's 38TERA.com and use the coupon code THEPROOF for 10% off. I think it's important for people to understand that those clinical trials you're talking about, they they have actually fed people in a controlled environment seed oils themselves. So I, I have, just to kind of emphasize and underscore what you just said, I have a quote here from another review, separate to the review that you did with your colleagues, another review has recently come out, I'll put it in the show notes, kind of tackling a similar question. And they say a systematic review and meta-analysis of 30 randomized controlled trials by Sue et al. involved 1,377 participants showed that dietary linoleic acid from seed oils did not affect blood inflammatory markers, C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So this is the highest quality evidence that we have where you're in the most controlled manner you know, possible f- that w- for us to utilize. We expose people to seed oils and measure these known inflammatory markers and we're not seeing a change. So it almost seems, Bill, like textbooks and blog sites and Google images need an update because it's only a quick Google to search omega-6 pathway and you'll, you'll be exposed immediately to this idea that the omega-6 pathway is the pro-inflammatory pathway and omega-6 pathway is pro-inflammatory and omega-3 is anti-inflammatory. And that seems very embedded in society. Yeah, uh, you're right. And people love a, a, a bad guy and a good guy, a black hat and a white hat. They, they think it's, you know, somehow you can't, lo- you can't love omega-6 and omega-3. There's something impossible about that. Um, and that's just not true. I, I mean, I, I've been a, obviously a big fan of omega-3 for my whole career. Um, and so theoretically, I should be an anti-omega-6 guy <laughs> because, you know, they, they oppose each other, but they don't. And I've just learned over the years that the evidence says the omega-6 linoleic acid is good EPA and DHA are good. Uh, you should have both. You know, both of them are good, and that's okay. Uh, and, but somehow it just doesn't. Uh, you're right. It, all you got to do is look at a pathway and think you understand all of biology, and that's just completely naive. The body it has so many systems, and so when you eat something, is a whole different thing than when you just look at a metabolic chart on the wall. There's so many pathways that are, are available to maybe even detoxify, to block the oxidation of products. I mean, if, if, if we were worried about oxidation of fatty acids, we'd be really worried about EPA and DHA because they got way more double bonds than little lake has. But we know EPA and DHA are beneficial. So how does that work, right? You know, so uh, people are very simple-minded um, about this thing. They don't think deeply and they don't, for some reason, are not willing to process the real evidence that's out there. It's 2025, and I have made the decision to join Function Health to help monitor and optimize my health. And honestly, after getting set up, I am wondering what took me so long. Function makes it extremely easy to track important biometric information over a lifetime. Information that you can use in real time to make important health decisions. Function gives you over 100 lab tests covering your entire body every year. Heart, hormones, liver, kidneys, thyroid, metabolic health, heavy metals, autoimmunity, nutrients, and more. Five times more testing than your typical physical for $499 a year. A lot cheaper than if you were to order all of these tests individually. That's if you can order them. Take ApoB and LP little a, for example, two very important tests for determining your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Yet, as outlined in multiple episodes on this show by Dr. Thomas Dayspring, they can be incredibly difficult to order with your local doctor. Using Function is very straightforward. You join and then visit one of their 2000 US lab locations. I went to one here in LA where I live. It's very easy. And boom, your results are tracked over time. 
time in one secure place. No shady upselling, no gimmicks, just your results beautifully presented and science-based insights from doctors to help you optimize your health. Skip the 400,000 person wait list today at functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill and join me on the path to nerd level health optimization. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. Thank you.